Hello, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure and privilege to be here with you today. Thank you to Wire to ask us to participate. Um, I joined the company about a year and a half ago as Chief Creative Officer, and Geeves & Hawks is a brand, which some of you may know, number one Savile Row, pretty iconic address for menswear. Um, the company was challenged with taking the brand forward in terms of upluxing the brand and taking it to a global stage. It had always been a brand with great tradition, 240 years of history, three royal warrants, uh, service to all of the royal family, uh, quite a heavy uh, background, uh, service to the military, Geeves and Hawks, both Navy and Army, um, and just fantastic tools to work with. Uh, the business is interesting today because we have stores in the UK and we have a tremendous amount of stores in Asia. So for us, it was about creating, bringing the brand forward in terms of evolution, but creating content to get our message out there um, through the web, but also uh, not involving translation and to kind of fast forward the image of the brand. Obviously, this is all done with very modest budgets. Uh, so using creative content um, and working with some great people and partners. Um, so for us, really the key is storytelling. Uh, we, we, for us, getting the story out about the brand and the product and putting the product into a lifestyle context. Um, my challenge has been to modernize the brand but to respect the heritage and how we play and balance both of that and, and play with both our historical element, our military element, the royal aspect, as well as um, modern men's clothing. I think London is important. Um, number one Savile Row obviously is our global flagship. It's a very beautiful building and we've just spent quite a lot of money renovating it. Um, when we choose how to spend our money, we decided that this was our window on the world. So. As important as it is to have an, a nicer, sexier website, which we've just done, more integrated e-commerce, uh, and all of that, it's still about driving people to the store, and it's still about the retail experience. I think for us, um, the customer should, it should be one experience. It's, it's one store, whether it's online or actually inside number one, or any of our other stores. Uh, we've brought in a house host, which is sort of a modern term for a butler, uh, to come in, serve whiskeys. It's very comfortable. Um, the store's quite contemporary and feel, so I invite any of you who are London-based or not to please come in and have a look at the store. And there's a few slides I'm gonna show you. Um, one, one of the most effective ways to get our message out quickly uh, and relatively inexpensively was to do small films. We've been making a lot of films which work obviously extremely well online. Um, we can do six second edits in social media. Uh, there's no language barrier and it puts action and product into context and it gets, regardless of where in the world they're watching it, it gets the brand out there and moving. I think it also creates much more of an aspirational aspect for the brand. So I'm going to share, share with you three short films that we did this past year. One is a, uh, the first one is something historical that we found, which was a 1950s film uh, of the Duke of Bedford and uh, for the BBC. And it was all about getting dressed in the morning for a gentleman and what he faces in 90 seconds. And it's quite funny. You can find the original one online. It's very serious. And we, we realized when we researched this film that the Duke of Bedford was our customer and all the clothes in the film were from Geeves and Hawks. Um, so we've remade it in a sort of contemporary, sexy, slightly James Bond kind of way. So you'll see, you, I'm going to show you that. The, the, the second film is about generational, the generational bridge. Geeves and Hawks has always been a brand about generation. So for us, obviously, digital is important to reach a new consumer. Uh, our, our challenge is to keep our existing customer, but to bring in a new customer into the experience of the store. And we've done that through product extension, whether it's doing more sportswear, accessories, a younger look, a younger cut in terms of the clothing, whether it's through these films, whether it's through a more exciting online um, experience or, or social media. And for the moment, we've managed to, to do both. I think also when you see pictures of Savile Row, there's a real dynamic between sort of classic and elegant with a really modern and sort of sexy feel. And the last um, digital piece I'm gonna share with you is something we do from our advertising campaign. So when we do a campaign twice a year, we do on location, we do print and a small, a short film all at the same time. And from that we use also those images for e-commerce. And it creates a very considered and comprehensive story. The, the last uh, film is really kind of like a men's music fashion video. It's sort of short, it gives a mood. And these are very, very effective to run in the store, online. Uh, they get sent out through GQ.com. It's just creating content. What we've found is a lot of our media partners are so hungry for great content that we actually get a lot of added benefits from 
investing in these kind of projects. And I think this year our, our media spend was tiny, but we probably got as, almost as much free pr placement as we actually paid for. So um, I'm going to start with that. I think I can't go backwards. I can only go forward. So we should only ever go forward, right? So this is the first one. It's called How to Get Dressed. And that's also, um, we work with strategic brand partners like Jaguar, for example, which helps us also get the message out through other channels. So that's one example. The next one is uh, about, as I was speaking about generation, we do a lot of uh, special occasion wedding suits, morning suits, uh, social season, things like that. So this was about um, the son coming in to get his wedding suit. And again, all very London focused. That particular video was shot um, in the store, and some of the um, archive uniforms that you actually saw, the red uniforms, are the um, gentlemen at arms, which is the Queen's, Her Majesty's personal bodyguards. We still make all the uniforms on premise, bespoke, in our atelier downstairs. Um, so it, was, it really was about blending some of the heritage into the film, and it puts, as I said, sort of motion and context into the brand. And the last one I'm going to show you is from the fall campaign. Uh, and we've just done the same thing with spring, so that will be coming out the next couple months, month. Um, so this is fall, winter, and this was all done in Scotland, and the feeling of the collection was Highland, so we were very much, we, we try to keep it as much within the UK and really push that element as well. Same filmmaker on all of these.
So for those of you who knew the brand before, it's not exactly the dusty navy blue suit company that some of you might have known. Um, it, was, it was always a fantastic brand. It had a lot of opportunity. And as I said, this kind of creating these small movies and digital content have, has have helped us enormously in moving the brand perception and image forward without um, spending a tremendous amount of money. Um, so in addition to that, we've redone uh, our website. And we sort of see the website as TV for our customer. So basically, looking into the brand through the website, as well as offering service. So we do, we do sell a lot of product online for e-commerce, um, but a lot of our clients are actually, the, it's driving traffic through the website actually to the store. And we offer service like book a, book a styling appointment online at number one. And it's brought a tremendous amount of revenue, additional revenue that we've been able to track through the website. So customers reaching us through uh, the website, but actually coming into the store for the experience. Um, so we, we really see the, the website as almost like Geeves and Hawks TV. And we're always changing and adding the content, updating it. It's quite a, it's quite a rich website. And then, as I mentioned before, redoing number one Savile Row was really essential for us. And to do it in a very contemporary, considered way, this is the entrance of the store. So the, the building itself has a very historical provenance. The front of the store was a William Kent designed Georgian home and the back of the building is the former home of the Royal Geographical Society, it's the map room. So it, it's quite an amazing piece of architecture. There was nothing original left to the building and we needed to kind of create a, a vernacular of what our new retail environment would be. So working with a local designer who had not done retail, she's a, a residential designer, there was a lot of research done on what, what would William Kent interior, what would a William Kent interior look like today? And with that combining some uh, design collaborations with some local artists in terms of a mirror and different sculptural pieces in the store that bring a lot of energy to the store and just create a really beautiful uh, ambiance for the, for the collection. So this is the entrance of number one Savile Row. All of the furniture was purposely designed for the store. And again, it really brings in the kind of classical elements as well as contemporary elements that seem to satisfy all of our customers. And then this is more, more of the purposely showing you some images with not too much of the collection, but all of the fixturing and furniture was all designed and inspired by research on William Kent and some of the old houses that he designed. This was from a, a wardrobe and a laundry room that, that we liked. And then these are some more design collaborations. So there's kind of very classical room with the smoked oak paneling and bringing in, again, some sculptural pieces and things. It's, it's, it's interesting because when we first started doing this, um, I wasn't sure, honestly, if we were going a little bit too far. But in fact, our clients have really appreciated that. And we haven't alienated the existing uh, consumer. If, if anything, the father's coming in and now the son's coming in and saying, you know, how do I get into this brand? And he's probably checked us out online uh, before he's actually come into the store. This is the map room. So this was the Royal Geographical Society's um, map room. And you see in the back the light boxes. Those are military uniforms. So again, bringing the heritage element into it, but in a very contemporary sort of sculptural way. So showing 
archive that feels fresh and modern. I think the idea for us is not to live as a museum, but it's a brand that's relevant and, and pushing forward. It's a really uh, fantastic space. And we've, we've put in, in the store now in the back, what sort of you see, there's like a gray stone floor. That's our made to measure and bespoke area. So we've created a, a consumer experience. It's a journey when you come into the store. So the first room, the first entrance you come in, there's that big cabinet and there's somebody who greets you. There's a house host who offers to get you something to drink or take your coat or even press your coat while you wait uh, or find you a taxi. Um, then you move into the, the main body of the store. There's the room with the fireplace. It's very inviting. There's a lot of places for partners or friends to sit, which is interesting how many people just forget to put comfortable chairs in the store. Um, but, but very considered for the people who are shopping, who aren't shopping, but are accompanying the, the person shopping. And then in the back, you have a made to measure and a bespoke area. So there's a lot of zones in the store and people seem to love this experience. And on the mezzanine um, is all special occasion, black tie, white tie, formal wear. So a little bit more private and a little bit more considered. Um, and this is the archive room. So this is open to the public. This is a room where we house all of our archives. These are the bodyguard uniforms that I was referring to. And those are actual uniforms, so we, we use those. So this all looks amazing online, but it, it looks incredible when you come in in person. And I think that's part of the point, is you can never substitute that actual experience. It's about a feeling when you come in. We've created a scent for the store. Um, the fireplace is going. The sales, the sales associates are terrific. I think that's, for us, really creating a world of Gives Knox. This is, um, you saw in the film, this is the original William Kent fireplace with a sculpture piece above it from Fredrickson Stollard. So again, that kind of story of the two worlds, sort of old and new. <clears throat> and then some of the personalized services that I mentioned before, so the idea of the online styling appointment. Um, it also helps us capture a lot of data. So for building our CRM, it's very key. Uh, this is something that's been an initiative this year from the marketing department. We have not had great data. So the website's been fantastic for that. Um, and, and people just getting, we get so many inquiries through the website about the brand, the history of the brand, starting a dialogue. So it also starts a dialogue with a person, whether it's through uh, messaging back and forth or through a phone call. And it allows us to start a relationship with a new consumer or even build on an existing relationship. So the, the website is a great tool. And we found even the e-commerce has been as much of a service component uh, a customer who comes in, men are, men are sort of creatures of habit. So you, know, you buy your white shirt in size 15 and a half and you, you like it and you just want 10 more. So you just click on and, and you buy it. So it's, it, it is e-commerce, but it's almost a customer service accommodation and uh, it works very well. And then also being able to view the collection online. So this is also very new for us. We're actually style out the collection, which comes from the lookbook. Um, and you can actually shop by look uh, and, and presenting the collection in a very uh, nice way that the customer feels they're really in the store and shopping around the store. And then just more details. And we basically what we do is we, everything that's bought either for e-commerce or for the store, we style it out and present it as if it was part of the collection, the seasonal collection that we present. So everything has a very consistent feel. And again, this is, this is partly because we have a very small, tight team in London. Social media, um, also something we drive from, from London. We have 100 stores in Asia, which is a huge business for us. We run our WeChat uh, from, from the London office. We have a Mandarin-speaking uh, person, and she, she only focuses on social media for China, and we do all of our local social media as well. And these are just some heritage, some heritage uh, images. This is a book that we've just published. So this is a book available uh, now for sale. And it basically takes you through the whole uh, history of the house. And this is something we published with Flammarion. It's the archive through to current day um, that we are launching tonight, actually, at the Victoria and Albert Museum. So it's a fantastic book to have a look at. Some, some of the archival letters. This is a letter from Nelson. So the, the history is very, very rich. And this you can all see in the store. These images are online. Um, and also for men, there's quite a lot of in interest in the military and history. So we get a lot of inquiries sometimes th about the archives or the military, then they end up coming in and buying a suit or a leather jacket or whatever it is. So these are just some images from the book. This jacket belonged to Diana, Princess of Wales. This, is, this was a mess jacket, uh, and that's actually in the store. So customers love being able to come in and actually see that jacket, know the history of it. Prince William, one of our clients, and Gives White Tie. 
the jacket we made for Michael Jackson. So it's quite, a, it's quite an interesting brand. We have a really diverse background. And these pieces are all in the store. So it is a bit like retail as theater. Um, people actually try this on. You can reorder it if you want. You can get a copy for yourself. One, one poor girl's dad bought one for her wedding. So I don't know, quite interesting choice of attire. Uh, and then some of the current collection. So you know, taking it through from archive to heritage, military, uh, show pieces and then current current collection and that's more that's an image of the archive room and on the on the left uh, the bespoke bespoke room uh, and that's a sort of completes uh, our tour of, of number one Savile Row questions or are we doing? Okay. thank you so you're a bit of a contrarian Jason everybody else today is telling us we've got to be on the smartphone we've got to be you know, swiping and social liking, you're saying it's more important to get people in the physical store. Is that sustainable as habits move to these things? Well, I think it's as as important. I don't know if it's more important, but I think in terms of creating a world, it needs to be one world of Geeves and Hawks, whether it's online or in the store. And I think coming into the store, all of this is just so rich um, as, as we grow. So it's trying to extend that experience as much as we can, whether it's online or in, in person. But we love to try to drive traffic to the stores through, through the technology. But if you don't make everything available to buy through the device, are you not sacrificing revenue? No, now we, we actually are to the point where we're getting, you can buy everything from the device. And that's new, that's really new for us. So you can actually, anything that's in the store, you can now get online. It's key. But this is something that, you know, when I started and the marketing, Simon, who's, who's with me today, the marketing director, there was very little, there was like, the e-commerce didn't exist. So it was, it was very simple things. Now you can actually get the entire collection. You can actually see what's in the store online. So luxury has been quite late to appreciate the benefits yeah. of online commerce, digital commerce. Um, what have you learned from the success of other retailers? You know, we've got Burberry here. What have, what's the lesson that you've drawn from what you've seen elsewhere? I think getting your message across um, and making it available is, is really key. I think, you know, Burby's done such an amazing job with uh, bringing in, first of all, playing on the London aspect, which they've done super well. I think also the idea of um, creating a coherent brand message, and, and Burberry has also done such an incredible job with that in terms of digital. But f for us, we're, we're really in infancy stage. So it's, you know, obviously we look up to Burberry as somebody who's done it right. Um, I think getting, getting that message across and also really having the consumer, there's just different touch points um, for different customers. Some people love the current collection and they're only interested in fashion. Some customers want to know more about the heritage, the military, the, the aristocratic background. So all of that really contributes to a total experience. I think what we've learned though is that um, as much as technology is important, the personal communication and experience in a store can't be beat in terms of building relationship with the consumer. Jason's butler and chauffeur await him. <laughs> so let's say thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.